Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Allie and Nate here. Uh, if you are new, we just want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel since I posted the birth vlog. It kind of blew up and we weren't really <laughs> expecting that. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We, I know that less than a thousand subscribers is not a lot, but we are thankful for each and every, and every one of you, one of you. <laughs> that has subscribed. So thank you. Today we're going to be talking about my birth. This the birth story behind the birth vlog and uh, how it all happened. It started on the morning of September 2nd. <laughs> It was 5 a.m. and I was 39 weeks. I woke up with some pretty strong contractions. They were about 15, 10 to 15 minutes apart. And it has happened before, so I didn't want to like get my hopes up and think anything of it. So I just went right back to sleep. And I was like, I'm not gonna get my hopes up or start timing them or anything until they get worse and more painful and if they continue. So I woke up when he woke up for work, which was when? Around 6.30, 6.45. And I told him I was getting contractions and they hadn't mm -hmm. gone away. They were still pretty strong. Like they weren't getting stronger, but they were still pretty strong. So I was like, I guess I should start timing them. And the whole time he was getting ready, I kept letting him know, okay, this one came 10 minutes. Every time I remember you telling me, it's like that one was five minutes, that one was four minutes, three minutes, six minutes. Yeah, and some of them, far, some far of them were like 10 me. minutes. He went to work and I texted my mom to come over just in case. And I told him I was gonna let him know in case I was actually like in labor or thought that it was, my contractions were getting stronger. I left around 7.45 and I was just going to a house pretty close by so I was only left for work for 15 minutes and got to work and I was there for about 15 minutes and I got a text and she said, uh, you need to come home. I think we're having a baby today. Yep. So let my work know and all my coworkers know and just uh, hiked home. I remember Alana waking up around 8 o'clock and I got her back. Ugh. I got her breakfast ready, I sat down with her, and I looked out the window, and I said, I think I'm having a baby today, and I looked out the window again, and I said, I'm having a baby today, and that's when I texted Nathan, because I just imagined myself, like, oh, by the end of tonight, by the end of the day, I could be holding a baby in my arms, so I was like, this can be real, yeah, so she got there, and then he got back from work, and we started packing our last minute things, and I started packing Alana's bag to go over to my mom's. This is where the birth vlog started and I was just breathing through my contractions and bouncing on the ball just to get things going and walking around a little bit. I had uh, called my mom and we talked to her and I told her, hey, uh, what do you think we should do? I think uh, we're having a baby. Her contractions are pretty consistent. They're not super strong. She recommended that we call her nurse and she said, well, you should probably get ready to go. So I started packing and she called the nurse at that point. Yeah, I called the nurse because I was just a little confused. My contractions were very strong, but they weren't consistent. They were like varying from like two to five minutes. Like one, I would get some that were two minutes apart and then some that were three minutes apart. It would go like two, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, two. All, it was weird, so mm -hmm. I always heard that like your contractions have to be like specifically like five minutes apart, and my doctor was like, you have to follow the 511 rule, and it's, it was nine o'clock, past nine o'clock at this point, and I had been getting contractions since five, and no matter what I did, they weren't stopping, because with Braxton Hicks, they just stop if you like mm -hmm. change positions or drink water, and I was doing all of that. So I called the nurse, and she asked if I could walk and talk through them, and I could talk through them, but walking was getting a little bit more difficult as like the hours went by. So, and I was, ha I was attempting my VBAC, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was going good and okay down there with my incision and all. So she just said to go ahead and go in and we got all our bags packed and 
I was still getting contractions and at this point we, my mom had left with Alana and he got the rest of the stuff in the car and we walked down the stairs and I was getting like no contractions and I had one contraction like right before we got in the car and then I had like two very little contractions on our drive and our drive wasn't even that long. Our drive was about 10 minutes and she was freaking out because she said, oh well shoot, why did we even come? Because <laughs> our contractions stopped. Yeah. But really it's like her contractions were still only three or five minutes apart. It just didn't seem like it because we were going somewhere. We got to the hospital. Uh, they offered me a wheelchair. They offered her a wheelchair. I said, no, I'm trying to get this baby out. We went upstairs and I was in triage and I got undressed all that and they put the monitor on me and the baby for the baby's heart rate. But the nurse had said they were going to monitor me for about an hour and then I could walk around and labor in the tub if I wanted to before I was admitted if I had if I hadn't progressed. She checked me and I was at three centimeters and 80% of face and this mm -hmm. was around noon. Yeah. So knowing that I was at three centimeters after having had contractions since 5 a.m. and it was already noon that was kind of disappointing but I kept going and she came back to check me an hour later and I was at still a three but 90% of face and that just I like progressed so slowly in my dilation that it was kind of freaking me out because with Alana I was like it was like super quick but that's a whole nother story she came in and said that my doctor knew I was there and she just wanted to admit me so got we got all our stuff and she took me to our room and they did all the IV stuff and the COVID test and thankfully that was negative but I couldn't breathe through my contractions with that stupid mask on I just had to take it off yeah. I even took my mask off at points they didn't care if I was eating so I took my mask off to eat and after I ate, I really kept my mask off a lot of the time. So they really weren't too picky about it, which was nice because I would have been pretty miserable with my mask on the whole time too. And my doctor came in after they hooked me up to the IV and did my COVID test. And she decided to break my water because I wasn't very much dilated. And I think she wanted to be there to deliver the baby because <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like the middle of the week and it was like the middle of the work day so I was glad she made that decision because yeah. I didn't want another doctor I wanted her there and when she broke my water she also like put in a little monitor it was like I an internal know, monitor yeah inside and it, she said it was just gonna float around and it was supposed to check the intensity of my contractions it was gonna monitor your c-section scar it was that was the only way to tell if you had ruptured yeah so she put that in and then this is when my contractions started to get really 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 bad and they hurt a lot i don't remember how far apart they were they averaged out probably about three or four minutes apart but they were still kind of doing that weird pattern where it was like two back to back like really close together one minute two minutes and then it'd be four minutes five minutes two minutes five minutes two minutes one minute one minute they weren't perfect, yeah. like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Right. Like it was weird and they were varying, but they were very strong and they were really, really hurting at this mm -hmm. point. I remember getting checked and she said I was at a four and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not even, I was like a four. I was like, that's not even halfway there. I was getting kind of panicky and they were really hurting. So I asked her if there was anything else but the epidural that I could get to kind of help me cope with the pain and anxiety <laughs> I was getting and what was the name of that? Uh, I think it was Stadol. We couldn't give it to you past five centimeters because it makes the baby all sleepy and she said that you could go from a six to a ten and like like super quick so mm -hmm. they didn't want to give it to me after that so I was still only at like a five when she came in to check me and gave it to me. That helped me kind of just relax and calm down and not panic. And I mean, I was still feeling the contractions. The pain was awful. And thankfully he was there yeah. 
help me through it yeah. all. Stay doll definitely didn't take the contractions away. She was definitely feeling it the whole time, but the nurse said it just kind of takes the edge off. It was it was really kind of hard to tell for me if it took the edge off because she was still crying, crying and like not wanting to be there. Uh, <laughs> I but... kept saying I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, and he helped me a lot during that time after I had gotten that because I wanted, he would breathe with me and he would let me squeeze his fingers. I'm sorry, they almost broke, but... It didn't almost break. It felt it like... It felt like it. She, she would, I gave her my hand, grab it, and she would twist my arm backwards and I couldn't go anywhere. I thought she was trying to break my arm in half. He was very supportive and very helpful. He would look, I wanted him to like, look at me right in the eye, like during a contraction. And <laughs> he would say like really encouraging things that helped me like breathe through them and like not think about the pain. Like he would say, think about your baby girl, like you're gonna get to hold her, this is worth it. Like you got this, you can do it, you're strong, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. that was helpful. <laughs> so I was laying down pretty much this whole time. And that was honestly what was most comfortable for me. I know a lot of people like to walk around or sway back and forth and that kind of stuff, but any movement I made was just awful. So I laid down and had a pillow in between my legs and that's what helped. Then, she was laying on her side. Yeah. Most of the time. Then the nurse came in and brought the peanut ball and I laid on my other side and just had the peanut ball in between my legs and my knees together to help open up my pelvis to get the baby to drop. And then after that position, I switched to sitting down, like she put the bed up to like where I could sit and my knees were supposed to touch and be together to help open up my pelvis and get the baby more engaged. And this is when they were really hurting. Like I was freaking out at this point and like the state all had worn off. So, and she had checked me and I was still only like, I think you were at a six. At six. six. So I was like, mm -hmm. With like how painful they were and how often I was getting them, I thought I would be at least like a seven and a half, almost eight. And I was still only at a six. During the sitting position, I asked for the epidural and he was like, are you sure? Like you can do this. You said you didn't want to do it with the epidural. And I was like, I've come this far. I'm proud of what I've done <laughs> with this pain. Like I'm good. Like give me that epidural. <laughs> and the nurse was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, yes! I'm like, freaking get me the epidural. <laughs> Cause, oh my gosh, they were hurting so bad. I just couldn't, I felt like I couldn't handle it, but it's all in here. And we had talked about it pretty extensively in the months leading up to giving birth. And she really was adamant. She didn't want to take the epidural, but she was open to it. Really, really wanting to do it all natural, all on her own. I also don't like needles, like the thought of that just kind of gave me anxiety, so I was just trying to stay away, but also keep it still an option. When she had come in for that, or when she came in and I had asked her that, she suggested we try a different position, and this is when I was on my hands and knees, like on the bed with like a weird birthing like ball a thing. big horseshoe like thing looking thing it was it was, it was really weird, weird and at at this point i could not she had put in the epidural order and at this point i just could not be in that position like i just had to lay back down and like breathe through it and close my eyes and like squeeze his fingers because that's really what had helped me i don't know how long it was but I, it felt like a thousand years <laughs> when that anesthesiologist came in i was already screaming at this point the bed the railing on this side was up and I was like hitting that thing so hard and I was like yelling at them to help me, help me, help me. And I don't know what you were feeling, but I just forgot he was there. <laughs> it, it really seemed like the nurse kind of stalled to call in the epidural order. And then it seemed like it took the doctor, the anesthesiologist forever to get up there. And I think after she brought in that weird hands and knee ball. I think that's she, when I hit transition and started advancing, like progressing super fast. I remember getting contractions and 
during the contractions, I was getting a little more pressure down there. With each contraction, the pressure was just getting greater and greater and like more painful to the point where like when the anesthesiologist came in, I felt like I had to push and he was like, <laughs> it was funny because he was like, uh, I can't put it in if you're laying down and I was like, help me. I was like, are you sure? Like freaking do something. And he's like, you're going to have to sit up. And I was like screaming because it was painful. And he said, he was like awkwardly standing in the corner and he was like, maybe check her again. And this is when the nurse came and she checked me and she said, yep, she's complete. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it was crazy because she checked not even five minutes before the doctor, the anesthesiologist had gotten in there. And she said, nope, you're still at a six. You're a large six, maybe a seven. That was literally five minutes before the anesthesiologist got there. And he was only there for like two minutes, maybe five minutes. So in the matter of 10 minutes, she went from a, a, loose, a loose six, six to a ten. full, yeah. ready to deliver a baby. <laughs> Anesthesiologist, oh, peace, good luck. Walked <laughs> out. Walked out. So I did not get the epidural, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because mm -hmm. I got to experience that like fully and all naturally. And I was still screaming. I was literally screaming, help me, like at the top of my lungs. Like it was the worst pain I've ever mm -hmm. felt and I just didn't know like what else to do like they said to breathe through it and I just like was freaking out so this is when they started to like get everybody in call my doctor and like take that stuff out with the big light and all the tools and I was still screaming and my nurse came in and this is what you guys saw in the vlog or she was like you can do this like you just have to breathe through it and and when she said that I was like, you're right, you're right, I can do this, like, yeah, I can do this. This is when I started to get, like, the really strong feeling of having to push, and I asked if I could push, and my doctor wasn't there yet, and they were like, no, and I got so mad, I was like, how can I not push? Like, I, my body is literally, like, freaking pushing, I can't not push, and I, I'm sorry, I, like, don't even remember him being there, like, I remember him being there, but I just, like, completely forgot that he was there to help and support. <laughs> I was just screaming at everybody. We had, I had a little practice push when my doctor had come in because when she was getting like her gloves on and her face The doctor on. was in the doorway. Yeah. She was getting her, her scrubs on and stuff and that. getting that, uh, I guess the gown. The, the gown and like the face shield. She's getting all that put on. And they said, all right, push now. And the nurse next to me, she was a freaking rock star. Uh, we and... got some comments that say that the doctor and nurse were like annoying, but there's a lot like people don't see when you're there all day. They were actually really helpful, and I was really mm -hmm. glad that that was my like labor team. So, yeah. And the nurse next to me, she really helped me out because Allie was still trying to break my arm at this point, and I was like, she was like help me, help me, and looked into my eyes like, help me. <laughs> I was desperate. I was like, I, I can't do anything. This is all you. you got to do it on your own. We're here for you. We're supporting you. This is all we can do. And I, I was also like, don't break my arm. Yeah. So that nurse telling her, like, you can saying, do you can do this. You got this. You got this. Uh, that helped. That In was my mind, awesome. I was like, you're right. Like, this is all me. Like, my body was made to do this, like, mm -hmm. God created our bodies amazingly, and I was like, you're right, I can do this, so this is when we started to push, and pushing was honestly a relief from the contractions, and I was like, I can't wait to push again and get this baby out, and it felt like forever in between the pushes, and finally my doctor came and sat down, and I was, like, kind of struggling, because they were, like, trying to push me down towards her on the bed that's when she was like calm down like you can do this and I was like okay at least she she's not here to just like catch the baby and peace out yeah. so she was helpful I don't know how many pushes I don't remember it was pretty awesome she got <laughs> the baby out she had the two mini practice pushes which kind of ran together and then both rounds of contractions after she had three pushes. She got the baby out in eight pushes. And I know she said that you can't tell me not to push, but watching it go from like contractions feeling like she has to push and like 
are sneakily pushing to active pushing, you really can tell a difference because the nurse tapped on my shoulder and was like, hey, look, here comes your baby. And it, you really could tell a big difference between just contraction pushes and actively pushing with the contraction. Yeah, and they were like, she's almost here, like, you got this. And that is, like, when I was, like, pushing with everything I had inside me. And, like, I could feel how painful it was. But at that point, I didn't care. I just wanted her out. I was like, get her out of me. Get her out. And they were like, you're doing it. And so, like, I pushed harder and harder. And, and longer. Yeah. They told her only push for, like, 10 seconds. Take so a deep breath going. and keep pushing. But she just pushed and took a little breath and pushed. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. And she was out at 5.15 p.m. And On September 2nd. 2021, 21. in case you didn't know what year it is. It was it was very surreal and very intense and absolutely amazing and they put her on my chest right away after she started crying and we got to do skin to skin for an hour and at least an hour yeah he got to cut the umbilical cord that was that was a lot of fun i mean it was just snip it was slippery and a little tougher than you would think they didn't really give me like big scissors like athletic tape scissors uh but it like the first cut, it kind of just slipped out, and the second one it goes. It's it's cool. This VBAC was absolutely amazing, and I am so thankful that I was able to have my VBAC. And to all you dads out there, no matter what, uh, don't let any distractions like I kind of let food get in the way. It's and fine. I was starving. <laughs> Uh, she didn't mind, but sometimes she did mind, and... Only during a contraction. I don't know how you could miss any process, whether it's a C-section or a VBAC or just all natural, a home birth. Like, dads, you want to be there. You need to be there to support your your lady. Well, dad, support your lady. You shouldn't have more than one lady. <laughs> It is an absolutely amazing experience. Wouldn't miss it for the world. So that is it for our birth story. We thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Then leave a comment down below. And we will see you guys in our yeah. next video.